Hello, guys. You're welcome back to Photographics Academy. All right, so I'm so excited about where we all are going to be looking at today. A very interesting part of touching, if not the most important part of photo retouch, and that is correcting your skin tone and making your skin tone have uniform color. So when I say correcting your skin tone, I mean if your if your white balance is not giving you all the control you want, other things you can do to get your skin tone to that place where you want it to be. And not just that, correcting the skin tone. If you are having two different colors in your skin and you want the whole thing to look as similar as this one on your screen right now, we are going to be learning how we did it. Let me show you something very quickly. Look at this image when we got into Photoshop after camera roll. This was the way the image is looking. If you look at this image, the skin tone on the neck and the hand is entirely different from the one on the face. So the mistake could be that the makeup artist didn't pick the right skin tone color for the makeup and it got bad like this. When you have this kind of issue, how do you fix it in Photoshop? First of all, let me show you quickly. Let me show you quickly. So this is the correcting of the skin tone, making the whole skin tone look similar like one. Look at the whole image now. It's looking exactly the same thing. The face and the arms and the neck, they have exactly the same color. And because I've corrected the, the skin tone like that, or rather, because I have matched the skin tone like that, we're able to apply another just one more color lookup table on it and the whole thing is looking uniform. Imagine without the corrected skin tone, see what you'll be getting with the same color lookup table. But because we matched the skin, look at what we got when we apply color lookup table. So that's what we are looking at in this video. One more time, welcome to Photographics Academy. So quickly, before any other thing, let's jump into Photoshop. So I'm going to, sorry, we're already in Photoshop. I'm going to go back on history to take the image for what it was original. So this was what the image was looking like when we came into Photoshop before we were able to build it to start stuff you saw. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my camera roll. It's very interesting. Make sure you stick to this particular part. This is the most important part of this video, camera roll. So when you get into camera roll, something would have told you to just reduce the uh, the vibrance or something or even try moving your temperatures and all of that. We've tried all of that and it didn't really work. So I'm going to just show you what I did. Apply previous setup. So this was the image after I corrected it in Photoshop. Let me show you what I did. So if you are looking at your own sliders, especially if you are using a newer version of Photoshop, you are going to need to start. There is a particular slider that is not showing here. It's called uh it's called split toning, split toning, and that is where the secret is. So to get your split toning, just have to take the versions back and to do that, go to calibration, go to version. So we are in current version. So you might look at version one. Let's go to version one. So version one is going to open up split toning. So this was the adjustment we made to the split toning. Let me close the split toning. So this was this is the image without the split toning applied. This is the image with the split toning applied. So if you look at the screen right now, you're going to notice that I moved my sliders, the highlights towards the, the blues and the hue towards the cyan. Just a little bit of the saturations as well. Without touching the balance, you can as well decide to touch the balance if you think you're not getting the same result. But I do not want the balance this one. So I'm going to take it back to zero. This was basically what I did with my split tone. Then I went into color mixer and made a little adjustment. So you look at my orange. Let me close the color mixer so you see the image without the color mixer. So this is the image immediately after split toning. But I felt it was still too uh too saturated, kinda. The oranges were popping too much. So I came into my my hue by color mixer and adjusted my saturation, especially towards the orange and the reds a little and the grease also if you go to my hue you are going to notice a little twigging around the oranges as well that was how we we're able to get this look so this is the image before and after before and after so if you look at it right now we've corrected the skin but the whole skin tone are not much they are not looking like the same they are not uniform and that is where we are going to next so you press apply or okay it's going to apply in photoshop now the next thing we are going to be doing is to match the skin tone to match the skin tone very simple this is the magic trick go to your adjustment tool adjustment layer sorry go to gradient mark make sure that you you 
deactivate it so you pick your colors from the image and make sure that the gradient map thumbnail is selected not the mask not the mask so open your gradient map go to this slider your shadows pick the darkest part of the skin tone maybe somewhere around here any other part can serve but make sure it's dark i just pick the shadow below her arm copy your brightness level ctrl c ctrl c come to your location and paste it then do the same thing for the highlight the brightest part of the skin to maybe somewhere around here copy your brightness ctrl c and just copy you can as well type in ctrl v to paste it then create one more adjustment create one more color rather so this should serve for your mid tone so maybe somewhere around here on the arm on the arm pick up your brightness as well ctrl c and paste it now close it Close it, change the blend mode. You can now open it, change the blend mode to color. Now we are having a good skin tone that is matching, but the problem is that it's bouncing all over the whole image and we do not want it. So, what we'll do is I will pick up our mask and max the whole image out. Not to waste your time, I'm going to do something very quickly so that I wouldn't waste your time. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my gradient map, pick up my background, and do select subject. So, I want to separate her from the background so she doesn't affect anything we are doing with the background so we we'll have our image on a separate let's put it on a separate layer let's put our image on a separate layer just like that you can do ctrl j so when you do ctrl j it's going to cut cutting the background rather so ctrl shift i i wanted to cut just the image ctrl j so it's going to cut just the image out look at it so we we'll have an empty image so whatever we're going to do now we can keep on the image and it will not by no means affect our background very simple so you can now open your gradient map, use your clipping mask and clip it on the image. Now we have it selected from the background, but it's still all over our image. So to fix that, go to your mask, go to select, go to color range. So I've already done the selection. That's why it's selected. Now if you look very well, you're going to notice that it's selecting the background as well. But because we are on a different layer altogether, it's not going to affect the background. Press OK and we have it corrected. So of course, this is obviously too much. So we'll just drop down the opacity to an extent, maybe somewhere around here. I think I like it at 65. Let's use 65. Anything lower can start giving you those differences you are seeing. Look at the way the skin tone is looking uniform. If you feel it, you do not want it on the dress. The way it's spilling on her dress, you can as well use your mask and take care of that. But for now, let's focus on the skin tone. Now, the image is looking washed out, saturated, and all of that. But we want to have a very rich tone on our image so the next thing i'm going to do very simple i'm just going to apply a simple color lookup table not a complex uh color grading just a very simple color lookup table on the skin look at this one this is already looking beautiful so let's just look for something that we think will work okay i think i love this i think i love this i think i love this but the problem as well is that it's all over my image but i just want it on the skin tone so very simple mode your alternate Copy the mask and place it over that one and it's gone from the background. It's gone. The problem now is that it's copying the whole mask, not putting in mind the fact that we have that we have uh, our image selected. So what we'll do is I'll clip it as well. Clip it as well so it leaves the background. So this is the image without color lookup. This is the image with color lookup. So let me show you the overall image. Let me group this together. Or rather, let me group this three together. So this is the image... When we came out of camera roll, this is the image after we did the color correction and the after we did the skin tone matching and the color grading. Let me show you one by one. So this was the image. So if we had applied the color lookup without applying gradient map, this is what we would have got uh, still looking in different in some areas, but we have a rich place, a rich skin tone, saturated skin tone, but the colors are not the same thing. So the moment we applied gradient map everything became uniform and matched up let me show you again when we started and just go back in history so this was the image when we came into photoshop this is the final result we had after everything thank you for watching this amazing video make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel and please don't forget to ring the bell so that you get to every single time before you do until then